right, so we are getting into what I'm just going to call the Gantz Eclipse, all right? If you're a Berserk fan, you know what I'm talking about. So this is the arc that people have been telling me about. This is the one that a lot of people are saying is their favorite. It's the one people say has the best art, and it is the one that the anime movie, the CGI movie that's on Netflix was adapted from. Now, that adaptation is going to be a lot different than these volumes because it has different characters, it has a different context, it has very different things going on. So I have seen that CGI movie, but I'm still looking forward to all the stuff that's going to happen here that I don't know about because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of differences because there already are. So what happens this time is the Gantz team now return to the room after Corona's death have been transported not into Tokyo, but into Osaka. They are in a city that's very far away from where they're usually from. So this is already a big change. Another change is that just like the end of the last mission, now everybody can see them. Like everybody, casual, human, civilians, they can see the Gantz team and they can see the aliens. So something is up with Gantz. Perhaps it has something to do with, I don't know, perhaps the aliens catching wind to the Gantz team and doing something to change the game, rig the game, I don't really know. But they are now in Osaka and it is overflowing with monsters and aliens and crazy creatures and the artwork is just absolutely insane. Uh, Oku is definitely channeling some Kentaro Miura in these images. I got vibes of the Berserk Eclipse while I was watching this, but instead of it being the Band of the Hawk, it is the very civilians of all of Osaka. And there are so many different types of creatures and monsters here, and people are being ripped apart left and right, and it is just absolute chaos. A Gantz game has never been like this before. Usually it starts out with you're fighting some of the minor aliens, and then it builds up and you have to fight the boss, or it's just like a video game in, in many aspects. But in this scenario, in this case, all of a sudden you are just overflown with creatures and it is just absolutely insane and I can see why people are hyping up this arc because I've only just started getting into it and it's absolutely insane so far. So a couple of big things to point out that are happening here. One is when they're first being transported into Osaka, the poor, the little kid, uh, God, God, what's his name? Uh, Takesh Takeshi, I think. Um, he gets transported before everybody else, so he's out left on his own, and it's this kind of great, it's kind of a heartwarming moment in a way where this child is here, he's being attacked by this alien, it's like literally he's like eating him again, it's like the berserk eclipse, like being devoured by this creature, but he remembers... Uh, the training, uh, he's been watching uh, Dizaman, Muscle Rider, he's been watching him, uh, who's been taking care of him, and all of his kind of martial arts moves and techniques and whatnot, and the little kid mimics it, but because he's wearing the Gantt suit, he's got that enhanced strength, and he actually winds up like knocking the alien far off into the distance, and it's great. It's just a very heartwarming moment. It's amazing that he has, he invented this hero of Muscle Rider, and then he met this guy that kind of fits all that criteria, One, and, and, and you know, he, he became this father figure, he became this older brother figure to this kid, and uh, in a way, the kid took on attributes of him, he's learned and he's becoming stronger just in his own self, as much as he can, you know, being that the age that he's in, and he was able to defend himself long enough for Dezimon, uh to get there. Again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing these names right, please correct me down below if you will. And while Dezimon comes there, I, I love that he's having this moment, we get to see a little bit of a flashback of him a bit younger and how he always went from school to school and he was tra uh, challenging people and he wanted to be the greatest martial artist and whatnot and he's, like I said many times, the physically strongest member of the group and he was able to fight down this gigantic creature, protect this child where he realizes that all these challenges, all this fighting, everything that he's done, it pales in comparison to how he feels about this child, which is just absolutely uh, incredible. And it gives him that force of will, that strength to push forward and to actually fight and defeat a creature that's like three stories tall that he's like riding on top of and like choking out and manages to rip the head off of. It's absolutely glorious. Um, and so I've loved that dynamic so much. I love the relationship that has happened between these two characters and just the fact that he realizes that this is what's important right now. I have to do this for this kid, which is just, just great. Um, the other gigantic thing that we learn in this in these two volumes is that there is another Gantz team that is native to this area of Osaka that the Tokyo team runs into, and they're pretty much 
the entire team is just a group of dickheads, essentially. They just do not care. They don't care about the civilians. They don't care about pretty much anything. They're, you know, uh, smoking weed and getting high, and one dude is actually, like, doing freaking heroin before he starts doing this. It's crazy. Like, just, they're treating this as just, like, a playtime, basically. Like, a time to have fun, a time to go kill, and uh, some characters are doing even more than that. Uh, actually, like, violating physically and sexually these, these aliens. And it's just, like, it's such a flip of the script from what we're used to. We're used to seeing the human characters be in such a vulnerable spot, and now this team has so much confidence, and they're the ones that are kind of, like, maliciously ripping down these creatures, which, again, kind of goes back to the whole idea of, like, do the aliens even know why they're being hunted? Do we even know? We don't know. You know, we're 20-some, by almost 30 volumes in, and we still don't know why Gantz is making the team do this other than just for its own shits and giggles we don't really know and so uh seeing these human characters that are just so uh smug about it is just very disturbing in a way it's a lot more it's it's even more disturbing than actually seeing these gigantic alien creatures uh ripping people apart because you know like i said i read berserk so i've seen that a million times but you know <laughs> when you uh when you have that human element of human beings and like the darker side of humanity that's always what hits harder than kind of the fantasy elements because we can be scared of monsters all day long but the real monsters are within ourselves right and uh and within the fear of other people so that's that's where the true terror comes in now uh we have the return of kato who was one of my favorite main characters from the original gantz team and now that Corono is no more kato of course wants to get the 100 points to bring Corono back just as i imagined but the other characters are thinking like look this other team is here they're doing the work they're getting things done they clearly enjoy what they're doing maybe we're kind of off the hook in this round and they're thinking like maybe we don't really have to fight this time we can just kind of like let it happen and even the um sakurai what's his name uh sakurai is it sakurai i forget the uh the psychic the trainer the one that trained uh, the younger psychic he's thinking like look this is just doesn't it kind of like feel like life is pointless if we can just be revived over and over again or if you could die and come back and die he's like he's like if i die this time like don't bring me back and he's the one that brought back his friend but now that he's kind of gone through this so many times and he's seen it he's kind of thinking to himself that like it's not even worth it you know to just continue doing this over and over and how difficult it actually was to get to 100 points the first time and it's like and you're in this scenario where you're just overwhelmed with the amount of creatures that are here it's just it's madness it's it's all over the city and he's just like look if it if i die i die but kato is kato and in even though he questions it and he wonders to himself if it's worth it he does wind up protecting civilians that he sees he protects them and even if they don't give him the proper credit back which they don't um he still is going to do it because that's kato man kato has always been the guy that's just ready to do the right thing the proper thing regardless of what it does to himself you know and he has this he has the innate desire that he wants to continue going continue to survive because he has his younger brother and even this time he wants to bring corona back but uh, just that unshakable will of Kato is something I really, really enjoy. And he has a great quote at the end of uh, one of these volumes where he says, like, um, it's not that I have confidence. It's just that if I don't believe in myself, I don't feel like I'll be able to get anything done. You know, so it's not that he it's not that he has um, the cocky attitude that the other team has you know not like them he has the confidence just in that like if i don't give myself the confidence then that doubt is going to bring me down and i might fail and i thought that was a really cool thing to throw in and just the fact that like a lot of people think gantz is just simply shock value and over you know pushing things over the line for the sake of it but you know, I think there is definitely value in a story like this where you have characters like Kato and you have the development of Corona, what Heath went through, and you have the development of Muscle Rider, you know, and and you see what these people truly begin to value and how they view themselves after, you know, putting in being put into these intense circumstances. So I think there is a lot more to Gantz than meets the eye. Um, 
The other things that are happening here is uh, Kato meets a new character, one of the other team members, uh, a, a female character, I can't remember her name, but she is, you know, shocked that Kato is doing what he's doing, that he's not just selfishly getting points and he's actually protecting people and whatnot. And she's very, um, she's very interested in him and uh, because of that. So she's following him around, so there might be something brewing there. Um, as well, we have the vampire characters, the two of them that came into the Gantz room with everybody else, and they're kind of off on their own. They go and uh, they meet up with a couple of aliens, but then the aliens turn on them and manage to wound one of them, but of course the leader, the blonde-haired one, he's still alive, and it looks as though he's kind of on his way back to maybe team up with the Gantz team. I don't know how they're going to feel about that since he did kill Corono, which is like who they all looked up to, who they all hailed as their leader, and who they want to bring back. So I don't know how that's going to go, but then again, the more allies you have on your side dealing with a circumstance like this, I guess maybe we could just let it happen to get through the game and then bring Corona back. I don't know what's going to happen there. Besides that, yeah, this, these two volumes were definitely just chaos incarnate. Like I said, it's basically eclipse level events, uh, people being torn apart left and right. And there's these three particular aliens that have kind of like been off to the sidelines. And apparently they are worth a hundred points just for one creature. So that tells you a couple of things. First of all, that tells you that they are going to be insanely powerful, probably more powerful than anything that we've seen against thus far, which is saying a lot considering the last Oni alien demon uh, mission was actually like, that was like insane that was actually that was like a shonen villain you know like five season five shonen villain level of strength there so i can't imagine what these are going to be and kato is determined to face one of them himself because he wants that 100 points instantly so he can bring corona back as soon as this mission is over so whew, i don't know how that's gonna go um so i had to stop it for there but those those are kind of, kind of the biggest factors I believe that happen in these two volumes, unless I forgot anything. And I'm sure you will let me know if I did down in the comments below. So tell me what you guys thought of volumes 21 and 22. Let me know all that in the comments below. Please give this video a like, comment, subscribe if you want to stick around and see more reviews. Uh, any interaction with the video helps it be seen in the algorithm a, little, algorithm a little bit more. So any kind of interaction you give helps me out, helps the channel out. So I really appreciate it. Other than that, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next Gantz review.